Aloha, welcome to the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens. Andrew will be our guest today. He's the co-founder of Integrated Security Technologies, protecting the businesses and communities of Hawaii and the Pacific region with industry-leading electronic security solutions. Today, we're discussing the robbery of the Rolex store at the Bellagio in Las Vegas and the physical and electronic security that will undoubtedly be used to apprehend the criminals still at large. Only two of them are still at large. Uh, Andrew. So that's how they apprehend them. They got one. <laughs> they got one already. The, there's a really funny story about that. These guys went in with a smash and grab at the Rolex store. Yeah. And uh, they took a whole bunch of jewelry and uh, they cared nothing of security. They put pig masks over themselves. Yep. And they wore gloves and, you know, heavy clothes. And they ran to a parking lot and uh, got into a car which did not start. Yeah. So they instantly caught one of the guys. Isn't that something? <laughs> you, can, you can never tell what people are going to try. And the funny part is, I think they just, uh, the Rolex store might have been a little bit, um, I don't know, complacent. And they, they just thought, there's cameras everywhere in Vegas. No one will ever try something so stupid. Uh, but I think maybe they forgot about things like, People always have smartphones. Everywhere you go, there's a smartphone. There's probably a video that they can piece together from that store to the car to anywhere in the United States based on just smartphone footage uploaded to Twitter and, and Facebook in, in the hour after the robbery. Yeah, and a, a car in Vegas, too, is, is well tracked. I mean, <laughs> well -tracked. They have a lot of surveillance because of the type of town it is. So, you know, it's a, it's a guy who, uh, in my opinion, that type of criminal, first of all, couldn't be stopped. Right, they were they were going to commit that crime regardless of the outcome. Right, they weren't worried about the surveillance. I mean, they were from the from the perspective of at least trying to cover themselves and hide from the cameras. They were they didn't want to leave behind fingerprints that type of thing. But they were so they watched going CSI. to do it. They've seen the CSI episodes. They yeah, they they <laughs> you know they hoped that they hoped that that was true. You know that uh, the the clothing the but but you know they weren't. It, Realistically, Vegas is pretty locked down. Yeah. You know, not much happens there that they don't investigate and figure out. I would imagine there's a lot of money floating around that city. There is, and, and there's a lot of surveillance, and there's a, there's a, a, a lot of great investigators, and a lot. And there's been every scam and every crime done or run there since the place opened. Sure, for go, business. Go so back to before gangster days. I mean, days, you probably. know, yeah. they they most of the stuff these guys have, or do, try to do there, someone's thought of, tried before you know so you know i uh it's interesting how you know physical security um you know i i love the perspective of uh, access control for example which mm. you can't really use on a retail store because you, you need people to walk into your business so you've got to take that risk mm. i can't keep that door shut uh, and buzz them in for example now, so maybe, there's an assumption of risk so you have to mitigate that somehow um, it, it, typically, you're, you're almost left to insurance. You know, I mean, as far as, far as the physical security, the surveillance stuff is not going to stop that. You, as you witnessed, these, these guys came in, they, they just make it happen, right? There's no, there's, they're not concerned about whatever you've done because you've allowed them in to the spot. Now, maybe you put fake Rolexes in there because, you know, who really knows? I wouldn't sell a fake Rolex to a guy who wanted to buy one, but... You know, no, that'd be brilliant. Maybe all the stuff under the counters is just, you know, those hundred dollar what they call them Folexes. Folexes, right? You, you know, know what I'm saying? So so I think of things them. like that, you know, that, that maybe they don't think about. You know, I don't know who you know, people like that, I mean, uh, what what are Rolexes worth? Uh, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty, fifty grand. They they're pretty range. expensive. Yeah, they go up from there. Sure. Yeah. So they're uh, you know, uh, they're hard to come by, right? Obviously, that, right. that kind of price range. And I think they hold their, their price. So you can probably, if you can get a hold of them and get them out of the country, and they probably had a place to take them and sell them already. You know, that kind of stuff is fairly targeted, it seems like to me. Unless you're, you know, maybe they weren't that bright. I mean, the car didn't start. So I, it's hard to say. <laughs> well, like, no, they're not that bright. Let's go steal some Rolexes. <laughs> I, look, criminals, criminals that get caught look stupid. The criminals get away with it. They look brilliant. Yeah. 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 So, so, uh, so you know, and, and I tell my students when they're when they're talking about well, you know why am I learning cybersecurity when I can get away with ten or fifteen twenty million dollars and make that break to you know the South Shore of France and uh, just live off the grid for the rest of my life mm -hmm. and I keep telling them that's twenty million dollars they're not going to let that go I don't care who you took it from someone's coming looking for you. So it's not that you should just go out there and rip off $20 million and fade into the nothingness. You're always on the grid somewhere. Someone's going to find you. And with enough money, you know, what's 20% of $20 million? That's, and, a, that's a good hit, man. And a, and a student, <laughs> right? An unpracticed criminal. A script kitty. 
right? right. Un, he's not a criminal. He doesn't have connections. <laughs> he doesn't have any way to get away. He's just a student, right? Right. What, so I mean, yeah. There's those are those are those dumb crimes. So those those that guy who just an opportunity shows up and he's having a bad day, makes a bad decision, whatever it may be. For some reason, they take advantage of a situation that presents itself. And it could be cyber. It could be that, wow, are you, you're you poking around at some stuff and you find a vulnerability, and next thing you know, wow, you're looking at a C prompt. And next thing you know, you're looking at somebody's bank account. Wow, that's yeah, nice. You got some access. Wow, I got their password. I could transfer money. So, yeah. you know, so who knows what, what you know, that seems targeted to me, but well, it could be situations also situations arise. It could also in which be you, opportunistic, right? You're in the building. Sure. You find yourself behind somebody's computer, and they haven't logged out. And yeah. it's, it's an important system. Maybe you can just use that to get whatever you want and get Sorry. out of there. Just information sometimes is highly valuable. Super valuable. Yeah. And you the thing that right that's off. me, and maybe you can tell me if this actually happens. I, I knew this, uh, this happened a lot when I was in the industry. Um, the physical security part of uh, the security plan, if you even have a security plan, usually fell under facilities. Unfortunately. And the facilities guys aren't really IT. No. And if they need to fill a gap, they might take a webcam that they buy at Best Buy, take the tape off the back, stick it up. It's Wi-Fi enabled. Cool. I don't even need a string of cable. Let's just hook this up. Username, password, yeah. default, and I'm on the network. Now you have a brand new hole in your network with default credentials that can talk to any other device. Because the Internet of Things is made up of all these devices that have the lowest basic, uh, most uh, basic level of security on them. They have maybe a username and password. They have hardly any authentication. So when you get in, your root level. It's an admin, yeah. right? And there's hardly any of these devices will do any logging or notification that they've been hacked. And you can knock them off the network and reset them as, as you yeah, wish. Yeah, once you own them. Right. And once you own them, you can use them to get anywhere. Or... As it was done last year, you can use them as a DDoS device. Mm -hmm. You can use them as a botnet and use all those devices. We were using webcams and refrigerators and DVRs. And that, those are the three biggest devices, I believe, I read that were used for a DDoS attacks. Yeah, and our, your audience may want to know that that's dynamic denial of service, right? So, so what occurred, right? So these guys took all those devices and flood like your website so no one can get there and buy stuff from you, just for example denial of service. And they, and they flooded the, uh, the domain servers. Yeah. So all Dynamic the websites. <laughs> so, uh, that was pretty smart. When you go and you type in the name of you know, Amazon.com and you get, uh, that's translated by a server into an IP address and it points you to that server or a uh, bank of servers. And uh, when you knock down that Amazon.com name and a domain name server, Amazon.com is basically offline. Sure. You can't get at you it. Can't, they, so they can't sell stuff. And they <laughs> sell $100,000 a second or whatever they sell, right? I would imagine they lose millions of dollars per minute. Yeah, it's yeah, got to it, be crazy. You right? can't go down with or, a company like and that. And the other thing, they, then they or the, 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 the redirect, right? The malicious redirect, right? So you're um, going to Amazon.com and try to buy some tennis shoes. The next thing you know, you're actually entering your credit card information into a, 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 a tennis shoe site that looks like a tennis shoe site that looks like Amazon, but it isn't. Somebody's capturing right. your information. Then you find out you bought four new cars, and you know <laughs> your credit card's blown up, and you don't know why. You're like, what happened? Like, what happened it, to me? It happens by the time you got off the computer and walked away. You know, nobody, right. I don't know if people understand how quickly that that malicious transaction becomes a, an illegal transaction somewhere else. Well, all of us, including the home users, have now um, accepted other devices and other security into our home networks. For instance, you know, I have my Wi-Fi network at home. I have my you know wireless router. I also have a DVR. The DVR, I have no control over. It is somebody else's. However, it is on my network. What's in the DMZ? It's, well, you put it outside. You would think it's, there's a way in through the DMZ. It's only natted. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's, and it's, there's a way into the, through the, you read about the DTV signals. So there's several signals out that they've shown that are, the cable providers are running. There's nothing on them, and they're just so they're right into all the Empty smart bandwidth. TVs in, right. In, instantly. Right. That's ugly. I was just reading about that one yesterday. It's like <laughs> really. What do you do for your customers for all these openings that you know, firewall it? Everything. Firewall that off. It, yeah, it's just bad. So the webcams that are wireless, do you do you always we don't insist, use them. you always plug them in? We just don't use them. Okay. This is wireless is even worse. I mean, so it's. I mean, so what happened is this is my experience with the industry, right? Our industry in particular, physical security. We used to, wireless was developed because we couldn't get a wire. Mm, I just, mm. 
it cost 10 grand to cut through the concrete and do all the stuff we would have to do to run a wire. So wireless. Okay, so let's, so let's use wireless where we really just can't cost effectively get a wire there. And then what happened was everybody said, why run wire at all? Yeah. <laughs> so the whole industry went berserk. It right. went, put, started, so all the home alarm systems, uh, a lot of devices adopted a wireless potential, a wireless opportunity. So you get hardwire or wireless, right? And um, that spectrum isn't um, owned, right? So, and it must accept interference. You know how you read the device, you know, you ever read the tag on your wireless device from the FCC that must accept interference, right? So, um, because it's not a, um, uh, what do they call it, re uh, registered. You know, you, have, you can go get a, you can buy bandwidth that's yours that you use from the FCC and you can pay it for licensed bandwidth. If you don't, then it means it's available to everyone. Mm. And once that's the status of it, unfortunately, it can be broken, you know, with software-defined radio, which back when all this started, software-defined radio, you probably had to pay a hundred grand for one. I don't even know. Today, you can build it on a Raspberry Pi with open source <laughs> software for $29. Right, right. And tune it to whatever. And I can listen to, listen to the devices in your house, talking to your alarm, have those little wireless contacts. And when you go to bed and you quit moving around, they all quit firing. So now I know oh, you're in that part of the room. That's the last one that fired and you went to sleep. So I can do stuff on the other side of the house if I wanted to, for example. So software-defined radio is a different sort of a problem, but another easy-to-use hacking tool for a guy who wants to spend the time to learn how to use it and sitting right out in front of your house. You, know, you can saturate the receiver. There's some other things you can do just to, from an intrusion system perspective. And then when we go to the other, the wireless packets, and you're, you're aware of these tools like a, a, a web crack and, and a, um, uh, what's the other one uh, that's kind of popular? So, you know, if, if the idea is that if I can sit there in a wireless environment and, can, and collect enough packets, mm. I can kind of figure out the, uh, uh, even if it's encrypted, if some, you know, like SHA-1, things like that, there's, there's, there's tools out there now that can help me figure out what the encryption is, break the encryption, and then the, the transactions that are occurring are available to me to capture. So I could perhaps capture the next login of that, that password uh, your user and password to the PC that's using that Wi-Fi network in the house, for example. And there's, and there's then, those tools will actually knock that device off the network, yeah. and then it has to re-off. So yeah, it so they, it'll, it'll emulate. Right. It'll emulate that your wireless access. That's even, you know even worse. That's the ones we use in the hotels and stuff like that. So, right, right. So your home your home network's got issues. I mean, you know, I don't know what the consumer grade is not. Um, I don't, I don't work in that industry. It's, it's even worse. I mean, my industry at the commercial grade and uh, DOD grade, you know, the, the DOD truly doesn't let this stuff on its secret networks, you know, protected networks. Right, so right. we run on different networks uh, for a reason, because you should, and, and that's a practice that all businesses should do, but businesses can't really afford separate networks like the DOD can, right? right? Can, can, so, yeah. you know, so we've got to firewall that stuff off. And, you know, then the, the business owner wants to use a feature set that's built into the system. And, um, you We're know... We're coming up on a break. Yeah, we are. We I do not know exactly when it's going to happen, but well, I we'll, message. Well, right. well we, we got a second, but you know <laughs> that we, 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 we firewall that, um, that, that VMS off, and then we let the feature come in via VPN. So that we, we can do it, we just need to do some things to mitigate some of the risks. Hi, I'm Nicole Alexander Enos, and I was born three weeks ago. Congratulations on being there for me for some of the few weeks of my life. I'm starting a new show, The Millennial Mind, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for the month of April, where we'll go over some of the reasons why millennials are some of the most anxious and frustrated people at the moment. Ah! I'm Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science here on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., you'll have a chance to come and listen and learn from scientists around the world. Scientists who talk about their work in meaningful, easy to understand ways. And you'll come to appreciate science as a wonderful way of thinking, way of knowing about the world. You'll learn interesting facts, interesting ideas. You'll be stimulated to think more. Please come join us every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. here on Think Tech Hawaii for a likable science with me, your host, Ethan Allen. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens with my co-host and guest today, Andrew Lanning from Integrated Security Technologies. 
Angie, why don't you tell me, what is your company all about? What do you do for people to secure their devices and their hardware and their companies? Oh, that's a big question. <laughs> so, you know, we get, we get calls because people have problems, right? And so um, a, a lot of times those problems are related to um, uh, intrusion. Or, or so they wait till they have a problem. Or unauthorized you, access. Yeah. So sometimes it's design work too. So it just depends on the, on the, on the client. But um, the, the more challenging ones are typically someone that's, that's had a problem that, um, you know, they, 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 oh, they're really, you know, fired up. And, you know, I've, I've had some kind of breaking in my parking lot to a car, and I, and I want to get some cameras. And I'm like, well, why do you want cameras? And they're like, because I had a break-in in my parking lot. I said, well, cameras won't really stop the break-in. They're just going to let you see someone who broke into your car. So what do you really want to do? You want to see who it was, or do you want to stop the break-in? So um, a lot of times our, our, our work is education, you know, helping people understand that you need to control your perimeter. So we, we I come out of the military. Uh, so I, I use those types of ideas to help protect the commercial businesses in, in Hawaii. And that starts at the perimeter, you know. Now, a perimeter, if you own a huge lot, is expensive, right? You've got mm. a big perimeter to protect. So sometimes you have to fall back from your fence line, perhaps, to the building. And then we use maybe access control on the doors so that that's your perimeter, the actual physical so building itself. you're talking itself. about defense in depth. You have a fence. Sure. You have a door lock and something behind it, and that. And even response in time so that, you know, the, the further away I can detect something that I don't want to happen or want to know about, then the mm. more response time I have. Oh, right. Yeah? yeah, right. So if I can detect it out at the fence line, I've got more time to figure out what it is as it's approaching my assets. Um, versus if it breaks in the door, then it's maybe perhaps already on top of my staff before I've had much time at all to do anything. So just as an example. So, you know, um, we have to... We do, so we have to they have those education things. A lot of stuff comes to us that's already designed and built by consultants in the industry and someone's building a building. So we will supply that, uh, those systems. But um, the, the, the people that need more help are the ones that don't know, you know what to do. They just know they have a problem and helping them define that problem and understand how to address it uh, in a way that you know, fits their economy. Um, uh, perimeter security, you know, doing security properly is not inexpensive. You, can't, you can just throw up a camera and maybe that runs people off who've been doing something, right? And that, it's not a bad tactic, hmm. but most ill-intended people know you can just, like, pull your hat down and hide from the camera. Or your picky mask. Put a hat on. Yeah. Whatever it takes, right? <laughs> so, so cameras are just not, cameras have never been about security. Cameras have been about, uh, and even today, about 99% of the video in the industry is still used for post-incident uh, uh, investigation. Mm. Now we've got analytics today. There's there's a lot of things that have developed, and I I don't want to take away from any of that work because it's it's good. Um, we can do a lot more detection. You know, an object moving in one direction. Uh, say say a, a, a driveway you're watching. Things should only be coming in. If something goes out, boom, we can alert on that. Um, we're much much better at detecting people and anomalies outdoors than we were just a few years ago so that machine learning there's a lot of things that have brought that industry way way up outdoor motion detection has for years been fraught with you know false positives right so um now when you address this with your customers do you go you fall back to like the nist rules and explain to them what nist is and how they set up these these standards for certain industries in the last in the last couple of years um, the the cybersecurity framework um, cybersecurity just as a word cyber hardening cyber maturity all these things have entered our industry because realistically for the last 25 or 30 years we hadn't done any of it uh, we used to be an analog business and uh, we had RS-485 communications which is serial communications like your old phone line just as an SRS-232 but similar. Um, we had coaxial cable with analog signals to the cameras right and uh, we got someone 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 discovered internet protocol and someone figured out how to convert these convert a company called Lantronics actually figured out how to convert you know RS-485 to IP so all of a sudden we're on networks well, we just went crazy <laughs> as an industry, yeah. and we started delivering all these great things right over your network, and people loved it. Problem is... Convenience. Our, See, they added super convenience, convenient, right? yeah, and, and a lot of functionality. Um, <laughs> the problem was our manufacturers really didn't take security seriously, and so they, the chipsets that they used, for example, in all these devices wouldn't support 
protocols like we see in the IT industry. You know, mm. your computer here can run, uh, uh, can have a certificate loaded on it. It, can, it has enough horsepower to run a transport layer security when I connect to a device and I can use um, uh, secure HTTP in, instead of just HTTP, you know, mm. hypertext hypertext terminal protocol. So we're so, talking about balancing that CIA triangle of well, the, the convenience and the integrity and the security of, of any given organization, and they went way too far into the convenience area. Way too far. And In the fact, other, they only went there. <laughs> they didn't go with security at all. So our triangle I mean, is a flat line. <laughs> yeah, I'm absolutely just, you know, our, our industry did a terrible job of becoming a problem for the customer today. Once the hacking industry grew to what it is today and everybody can make money stealing information and selling that information, all information became a target. And now all these systems that lacked correct hardening, you know, really just lacked the, the, the horsepower to be hardened, mm. um, <laughs> started taking a beating. <laughs> you, and, you know. and you were telling me uh, before that uh, the central control center for like uh, a camera set and some other security devices, uh, if they all feed into the central security system, you're monitoring all of them, but then you have an update to make one more secure, it might break your central command center, so you have to upgrade that, but then that might break your connection to the older system that hasn't upgraded to this new security protocol. Yeah, so the firmware problem. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have a, a firmware problem in these devices, and um, you know, um, s manufacturers got in the habit, because it's, it's inexpensive to mm -hmm. borrow libraries, DLL, so they would compile their firmware from existing libraries that were already broken or poorly written or had vulnerabilities in them. And this but they worked. And it's, an, oh, they, well, they delivered video to the customer <laughs> who wanted to see it, or you could use your phone to open the door, for example. The, the problem is it was very badly built and, and unregulated, and, and no one paid attention to this. No one actually paid attention to this until a few years ago. And so, you know, now our industry's having to correct itself, and our customers who've been getting more and more functionality for lower and lower price points for many, many years now, uh, all of a sudden have to pay more for us to go back and, and check on these, you know, run these types of scans like you're talking about. And uh, I'm a, we're a guy, a company that does this, and our, a lot of the devices we scan, it, they, they blow up. I mean, they absolutely can't even handle a simple in-map scan, for example. So they, they, <laughs> they reset, and then they reset. And so when it resets, it goes back to a default state. And you got to set it again. Very bad. Yeah. Oh, that is very bad. So, so brings know. into uh, brings into uh, to light the uh, the standards organizations that we should be depending more on. NIST for the rules, sure. for example, National Institute of Sec uh, Standards and Technology, yes. right? And then also things like the IEEE would handle that. Yes. Right? The Institute for Electronics. That's what, and those are the guys we ignored all these years. <laughs> but they, they have those, sure. those standards on, online. Yes. So if you want to build a device and you want it to integrate and be upgradable and have your firmware the most secure, you go read the latest standard in your protocol and you should build it to those standards as people aren't. So the cheap uh, no. stuff is... Yeah, and, and, and the expensive where? stuff is same place. I mean, seriously, this the industry is uh, from top to bottom. Um, just now, are we? Just now, I mean, just now. This there's a big <laughs> there's a big security show. Like honestly, next week, yeah. a big national you know a, a, a national security show, and we've got. I, I saw some devices last week that are now you can load a certificate on them. Now they only do TLS, which you know, transport layer security is the latest version of SSL, that, but TLS 1.2 is, is the norm, and these only can handle TLS 1.0. And so that's, a, that's a, as you know, a, a, a function of the, the type of encryption and the amount of processing it takes to do it quickly for the thing times out or blows up or whatever. So, you know, there's progress, and I, I haven't been able to say that yet, but I can, I can say it today, and I'll be back here in a few weeks, and I'll be able to talk about hopefully more that I found. Um, in the meantime, what, what we've been doing is, is um, you know, scanning these devices, making sure that all the extra FTP, the ports are closed that aren't being used, right? If you're just streaming video out of a camera, I don't need the email port open. That's yeah, 25. SMTP, I don't need like that, yeah. FTP open. And so, um, the, you know, going in and making sure those are all closed uh, so that this device can't be, you know, attacked through those ports. And then... Um, documenting the le the type of encryption that's on it, you know, and, and understanding what it is and taking a look at it and then documenting it, right? So we do that on the bench before we go install it in your business. Then when we install it, we run the scan again to make sure nothing's changed. Yeah, you got to verify. 
Yeah, and then we come back as a part of the maintenance plan. We come back and do that periodically. And you have to do just that periodically. To make sure that, yeah, Someone the, puts a webcam up that you didn't know about yeah. and just hooks up to the network. You're going to find that. Or, or, or your administrator's in there playing with the settings and accidentally <laughs> turns on FTP. Or, they don't do that. Or someone hits the reset. Oh, because no, they're because no. the guard's sitting there all night long. <laughs> nothing's going on. He doesn't have anything better to do, so he decides to start poking around. Right. Yeah. And, I, can, you know, I can host a music server right here. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or he <laughs> brings doing his homework. He's bringing in a USB device oh, yeah, stick great. and loading up some other garbage. And so, um, now I was uh, I was uh, reading some articles about the Consumer Electronics Show that just happened uh, in CES, January. Yeah. CES every year, and that's all they're about: convenient electronics, the newest, greatest, con most convenient yeah. stuff. And they're all about the smart refrigerators now. Yeah. You can see the. The huge screen on the refrigerator door. We can order milk and whatever. This one had, uh, you know, I, the, I saw it. I believe it was a Samsung. Open the door and you put in the milk. It it knows because of the barcode on the milk when you put it in yeah. how much it's supposed to weigh. Yeah. You put it on the shelf. The shelf weighs it. Yeah. Oh, it's only half full. You might want to order some milk. Yeah. So it asks you to order some milk. And you do it through your little computer on the refrigerator. No security. They're really oh, not no. thinking about and security they're doing, in your they're refrigerator. They're doing that IPv or POE. They're, they're actually on the power line, on the power cord of the of the fridge. Yeah. And that's it. I think so. Yeah. Wow. And just so L insecure. LRE long distance. LRE long, and some of these have USB Ethernet. ports. Oh, yeah. And so you can walk right up and put a USB stick in there, which is one of the biggest uh, holes in security in the entire world. You walk through a parking lot. Hey, I found a USB stick. Any portable media. What, what's, what's on this USB stick? Let's plug this in and find out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, I won something. I'll just fill this out. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's um, the the consumers are uh, be just being duped. I mean, you know, they just don't know. And so, as long as people buy this stuff, you know, the, it's going to continue to be made and continue to be sold. And um, you know, it, it's a uh, uh, you know, it's a sort of a buyer beware. And and you know, there's a lot of people that are, you know, are they all being victimized? Do they all have things worth taking? I don't know. I don't know. But I do know that they, they're not aware. I mean, I have entire industries that I talk to and in the whole room, you know, 1% or 5% of the companies are doing anything about cybersecurity or cyber assurance. And these are business people, C-suites, managers, right? And so if they're not, I know that the homeowner Right. You, well, lost. you have to develop a culture with cybersecurity and physical security. Yeah. You have to, everybody's got to be, it's kind of hive mentality or it doesn't work. Yeah. Everybody's got to know what's going on. Now, you, you run integrated, sec, integrated security technologies. Yes. And, uh, My wife runs it, actually. We're co-founded. IStechs.net. Yes. Right. That's where you can see uh, everything that Andrew does. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you. Aloha.